Be merciful unto your servant. Give me the shade of your lotus feet and purify me. I hold on to your lotus feet. Teach me to control my six passions. Rectify my six faults. Bestow upon me the six qualities and offer unto me the six kinds of holy association. The six passions are those relating to words, the mind, anger, the tongue, the stomach, and the genitals. The six faults are overeating, attachment to material things, inability to follow regulative principles, sense gratification, useless idle talk, and impure habits. The six positive qualities are enthusiasm in practicing devotional service, firm faith in devotional processes, a strong desire to attain prema bhakti, a favorable service attitude, avoidance of non-devotees, and appreciation of the company of devotees. The six methods of association are to go to an assembly of devotees, to invite devotees into one's home, to discuss and hear devotional topics, to take the Mahaprasad of devotees, and to offer Mahaprasad to devotees. I do not find the strength to carry on alone the Sankirtan of the holy name of Hari. Please bless me by giving me just one drop of faith with which to obtain the great treasure of the holy name of Krishna. Krishna is yours. You have the power to give him to me. I am simply running behind you shouting, Krishna, Krishna. <laughs> Krishna, Krishna. Krishna, Krishna. Now, this is very significant. Uh, Krishna is yours. You have the power to give him to me. The advanced devotee thinks, actually, Krishna is mine and I am Krishna's, uh, that by his complete surrender, by uh, giving himself to Krishna and letting Krishna control him and uh, uh, actually engage him 24 hours a day in his service, then Krishna becomes ours. This is his promise. And this is also uh, echoed many places in the scripture. I think we quoted a, a bunch of scriptural slokas just the other day about how Krishna gives himself to the sincere devotee. He actually gives himself 
you have to experience this to understand it. It's something that is very hard. Imagine God coming and surrendering to you. Huh? But that's only because first you took the initiative and surrendered to him. But he's very kind. You know, the, the Western idea of God as being, you know, really heavy and um, like to punish people and stuff like that is very inaccurate. Actually, God is very light, very happy, very joyful, very sweet, very loving. He's the most loving, most beautiful, most happy person. Uh, that's God. So we should endeavor to bring God closer to us by surrendering to him. He likes it when we surrender to him because he knows it's for our benefit. Not that he needs our service. Huh? What kind of service can we offer to God? Now we have nothing. We're very limited and insignificant. But he likes the love with which we offer our service. And he comes to relish that love. And therefore we should always uh, try to invite him into our lives by offering him service and surrendering to him. And one of the things he says in Bhagavad Gita uh, is that if you really want to know the truth, then approach a spiritual master, offer him service, and inquire from him about the absolute truth. The self-realized soul can show you the truth because he has seen the truth. That means Krishna is his, uh, and he can give Krishna to you. Now, uh, last week, somehow we got a little mixed up, and we skipped Shloka 18 and did 19 instead. So let's go back now and do Shloka 18. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Svayam Bhushamburaditya Pushkaraksho Mahasvanaha Anadini Dhano Dhata Vidhata Dhaturutamaha Svayambhu means Lord Krishna is the self-effulgent Lord. Svayam means oneself or by oneself. And bhu means effulgent. Effulgent means that he is emitting all kinds of energy. Uh, he's the energetic source, the origin of all energies. So just like the sun in the sky is emitting so much heat and light, Similarly, Lord Krishna is emitting all kinds of energies. And his energies are basically divided into three. The external material energy, the internal spiritual energy, and the jiva souls, the living entities, who are called the marginal energy, which means they're between the internal and the external. And we can verify that very easily. When we look out externally, what do we see? The material energy. And when we look inside, internally, what do we see? Our mind, intelligence, false ego, and various uh, sense impressions, uh, which are registered in the mind. So the mind, uh, intelligence, false ego, and the soul, these are all subtle energies. Uh, now, mind, intelligence, and false ego are still material. So we have to look very deeply indeed to find the soul. What is the soul? Simply the consciousness. The major symptom of the soul is consciousness. When we're conscious, then we know that we're a spirit soul. Okay, because material things aren't conscious. Uh, I, can, I can bang on this drum and I get a sound out of it, but that's only because I bang on it. It, it won't play itself. If I say, hey, play me a nice beat, huh? the, the drum won't do anything, won't respond because it's a material object. Of course, we're engaging it in Krishna's service, so that makes that spiritualizes it. But still, it's not going to do anything by itself. We have to actually play it. Huh? So the soul is the source of the energy that animates the material body. And similarly, the Lord is the source of the soul. The soul is spiritual energy, but because it becomes in contact with the material energy, it gets covered by this material covering, this body. Okay? The soul is shining spiritual energy just like the Lord. Huh? The soul is also Svayambhu. In fact, 
out of all of Krishna's 64 qualities. The spirit souls, the jivas, can assume up to 50 of them, 71% of the Lord's qualities. However, the difference is we have those qualities in very small quantity, whereas the Lord has them in unlimited, <laughs> unlimited quantity. Uh, so uh, the Supreme Lord is so beautiful because he has all these exalted qualities and uh, he has them in an unlimited quantity. So Lord Krishna as Svayam Bhu, he can emanate not only the material world and the spiritual world, he also emanates all the other personalities of Godhead. He also emanates all the shaktis or energies like Srimati Radharani and her expansions. And then he emanates the uh, living entities and all of the energies that they emanate uh, they all originally come from Krishna. So that's why when we see the energy of the sun, we 